Hello Composers, Mike here and you are watching Studio Time with Mike. And in this episode I will show you behind the scenes as I create a sound palette for a new adventure music style composition, specifically the one you see behind me. So let's dive in right now. Watch behind the scenes as I compose music. Record epic ideas. Do sound design. Play with new sounds. And do all kinds of creative work in my studio. Welcome to Studio Time with Mike. Alright, so here I am in Logic now. And as you can see, this is my master template, by the way. At the bottom, I have created a main master folder called the sound palette. So let me sh open this up and show what's inside. Because this is actually one of my new methods that I'm trying out. Instead of having a template full of preloaded instruments, which takes so much time to load, uh, I have these sound palettes set up basically as a all-round palette of all types of sounds I usually use for my compositions, but the, the interesting aspect is that there is no instrument loaded, as you can see. So I am basically loading up an empty sound palette. But why? Well, basically because now I can just use these as like references. So when I load up my empty template, um, I can, for example, start with the percussion and just look, what do I need? Well, I need an acoustic drum kit. Well, drag and drop up here in uh, percussion. Let's uh, zoom in or out, I mean. Um, then I can take, for example, do I need some uh, other percussion, perhaps Tycho's, drag that up. So I have that in, the, in there as well. And then I go about this the same way for all my main folders or track stacks, mixing groups, whatever you call them, percussion, drive, bass, back, front, and effects. So that I build up my sound palette for the particular composition that I'm working on. Uh, and today I'm actually going to do just that. So let me undo what I just did. So I'm starting from scratch and the track I'm going to start to build a sound palette for is uh, an um, adventure music style composition. So let's start right away. Now, the way I like to compose music is to do what I call the mock-up composing method. So instead of using all these different groups full of tracks, I start with the most essential parts of music and then I build up the track from there. And in my opinion, at least for my workflow, I have it set up like this. The beat, which could be acoustic or electronic drum kit, per, uh, orchestral percussion or whatever, so the percussion part. The rhythm, meaning all the melodic types of rhythm, meaning strumming, guitars, ostinato strings and so on. The bass self-explanatory, the chords, which could be piano, strings, uh, and so on, the melody, which is the main theme, and the har main harmony or extra counter melodies, basically, for the main melody. So this is how I like to build it up first, because I want my main sound palette to really have the kind of vibe and character that I'm looking for in the composition I'm going to create. In this case, adventure, uplifting adventure vibe. So let's start with the melody. By the way, I always have a couple of instruments already added as default, so a piano. So in the main melody part, I'm gonna start here and add a couple of things. So I always go to my sound palette just to get a sense for what I, what do I want to add. Pop probably, so this is basically a visual reference guide for myself. So I can, if I want to, I can drag these up uh, and use them as a template, or I can just add them in as I want. So I'm going to go first to what I feel is the most adventure type sounds, which, which is high brass, like trumpets and such. Cannot have adventure without a trumpet, right? 
Then I'm opening up my library, my own custom library, by the way, which I created. It took me two days of work <laughs> to organize everything in folders and subfolders to the brass. So I need trumpets. I'm going to go for Forso, which is one of my new favorite um, libraries for brass. So this is trumpets. Then I'm going to go for, let's see, woodwinds, I think. No, let's do strings first. I'm going to go with something that has a really lush, uplifting vibe. Uh, minimalist strings. I'm going to try the lush strings from Aflatus. Why doesn't it come with the name? It us usually does, so let's see if I can... I will try it. This one more time. Strings. Hmm, that's strange. I set it up so that it should come with a name as well. Sometimes things doesn't work, I guess. Enable patch merging. It should do it. Well, which which uh, library of Flatus? Strings, and then I'm gonna have some woodwinds as well. So let's go into winds. I'm gonna go with solo flute. From Swam, one of my favorites as well, because I can use my breath controller. Flute solo, so what do I have now? Let's see. Let's see, I'm gonna go closer here so I can play something. Can you still hear me, my friends? I'm gonna use my breath controller as well. Let's mute the piano for now. Can I hear the trumpets? Okay, so I might do that as a breath controller thing as well. Let's see if I can map it. Hmm. Or should I do it as breath con or let's see. Okay. As you can hear, I I just want to get into the real vibe. Let's remove the piano, the omnisphere strings. I'm gonna go with something more uplifting. This is just a string pad basically. So perhaps more winds and or more brass. Probably more brass. Something from Cinebrass? Horns, perhaps? I'm gonna try Symphony Essentials, even though I know those are washed in reverb. Horns. Right, so a bit lower there. Right, starting to get the vibe. <laughs> you, you can totally hear it now. For the harmonies, I'm gonna go with... Uh, so this is will be harmony line, not chords, but actual harmony line. I love winds for that. Perhaps I should go with a piccolo, piccolo up here, in fact. I'm gonna try that high in range. I'm gonna, I'm, I need to know why it doesn't add um, the name. It should... <laughs> Right, and uh, strings, I'm gonna go with something. So for for harmonies, at least for me personally, um, I usually love to have those th more thin, like more solo instruments and such, so they don't take up too much space. So for the strings, I'm gonna try violas. I usually keep the violins for the um, leading melody. Let's do minimalist violas from Aflatus. Let's see how it sounds together. Man, that's slow. That legato is slow. I can't really play that um, for... It sounds... What's, why does it sound so... It, it lags too far behind. Um, I'm trying a symphony of sensuals here. Alright, so let's see how they sound together. 
Yep, uh, that's good for the harmony. So for the melody, I will probably start like this. Trumpets, let's stack it together. So like so. So we have strings, trumpets. Perhaps not as, it, a bit too much reverb. It might be here. Let's dial back the hole a bit. Might it might not go high enough with the expression all the way to the top there? I'm not sure. The horns and then the flute solo. All right, so I think I'm happy with that. Here I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start with some piano. Let's try a pure piano from Una Corda. Una Corda. I don't know how to pronounce it. No, too intimate. Let's do soft piano from Alicia. As you can see, I have labeled these with the character they have, like cinematic classical concert and so on. I'm gonna start with that. Um, it's Alicia Keys. Should I perhaps no? No, I'll leave it at that. Then not low strings. I need some some big string ensemble here. Probably going to go with. Uh, Cinematic strings too, I think. I'm gonna try it. But minus, no, no minus. No minus on you. Strings. Um, these are way wrong now. I don't know why they are set up this way. Okay, so what do we have here now if I put the mode wheel somewhere in the middle? So let's do like major, major from D major. A bit higher mode wheel. Sounding uplifting, right? For the bass, we have the so I have a low sub-bass kind of thing here. Do I want... Do I want an electric bass? Probably not, but I'm gonna leave it muted. Sub-bass only. Rhythm, let's see. I've already added low drive, let's see how that sounds. So it's low, of, of course. That's from what? It's from Novo. Yep, I'm gonna go with that. High drive. I actually already have this set up. Something here. Symphobia staccato for high strings. With the octave on, by the way, as you can see. So let's go with the D major again. It's hard to play with a, with a microphone in my face, so I can't see. <laughs> yeah, I think that could work all right. So I, what I want to do is record... This is how I use my mock-up track, by the way. I like to use it and record on the track stack here, so on the folder with all the layers. So I get the full octave, as you can hear. I think that's cool. Then for the percussion, I think I have damage loaded here. I usually do that. Uh, let's see. I actually have damage as kind of a... By the way, let me show what damage is. It's uh, heaviosity damage. The Armageddon Ensemble, it's like my go-to patch to start from. Because it has the low, the tom here in the lows mids, low mids, and the highs, I use stick hits and snares there, and then for accents I actually have just symbols from from the drum kit that comes with Logic, just to have something uh, in the mock-up. So, let's see, we have the beats now, we have the rhythms, We 
we have the bass, which just now is a sub bass. We have what I'm going to play the chords with. And as again, I, I like to, in the mock-up, play on here. So I get all these piano strings and I don't need that. Just that, like so. So E major, perhaps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get the microphone a bit further in here. Can you still hear me, guys? Now I can see the piano. Sounds nice and soft, which chord should be not in the way of the melody. I need to get my breath controller again. <laughs> You can totally hear the vibe I'm going for here. Very uplifting adventure style. And the harmony here with full flute solo and strings. I think I'm gonna ride the mod wheel a bit more here. All right, I think we have the main sound palette to start from and this is basically what I had to show you guys today. I'm going to use this sound palette now and start sketching in the mock-up folder here a new track in the adventure music style. Alright, so I'm actually going to finish this episode of Studio Time with Mike with a short brainstorming or creative songwriting session or whatever you want to call it. Meaning I'm going to try to record some ideas that I get <laughs> popping into my head here. Uh, so let me put on my breath controller and start recording some stuff here on the melody, which I think is what will set the emotion for this track or basically any track. So let's start right away. Nope. So let's see, I'm, I'm gonna just try to... So I'm in A major. Alright, so those notes. Let me try again. I think I have an idea here, but um, since this is brainstorming, we make mistakes. Uh, I cannot come up with the final result right away, and neither can anyone. I I hope, I hope. This is not the Matrix after all. So let's listen back to what I got. The first part was right, all right, I think. So obviously the tempo is too slow, but that's okay since I'm recording now anyway. It's harder to record at the faster tempo, of course. But I could try to kick it up to 130 instead of 120 just to see how it feels.
So I think the first part of this melody is actually kind of nice. So a bunch of these notes are way too short, I can hear. Uh, but let's see this as well. Let's see. I think the breath controller did some crazy stuff here. Let's see. Again. So let's try quantizing this. Uh, by the way, I always quantize in the mock-up section, but not in the real composition, because I hate over-quantizing things. But I'm just gonna try it at 16th notes and see how that sounds, if it's tight now. Right, so let's call that the first part of the melody. Uh, where are we at? We are at like... So let's split that. So we have one, two, three... Well, I have a beginning note here. Okay, so, so let's try to add something to it. Like, so it's a turn in the melody. Probably going to start from be the beginning. going up or something like that. Let's see what we can get from marker to let's Oops, the mod wheel there. Let's see what we have. Let's quantize that to 16th notes as well. So this is what we got. Bad timing there. Let's see. Is this wrong? I guess this is wrong too. Um, those last notes were actually all, all too early. This as well, this as well. You can't see it on screen since you watch me play here, but... That was too fast, let's quantize that. Right, so let's call that, I think I um, accidentally brought the breath controller too high there in the second part but that's at least we have something so what what do we have so what do we have uh, chord wise harmony wise let's see All right, so it's I, I just do an inversion there. I need to bring up this so I can hear it. Sorry if it's too loud. I 
I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm actually... I'm, I'm not gonna try. that okay I'm gonna bring this down a bit just for this and see what we have whoops playing on the wrong track re-record wrong that's wrong let's see what uh, did i play the chords right in the first part i'm gonna go in i'm gonna extend those chords to whoops sorry guys sorry sorry didn't made a mistake keyboard is back um this is what i'm going to do keep and i'm just gonna listen to the chords here so what do we have what do we have <laughs> gonna bring those down in velocity way way down like so I'm gonna bring down the volume too let's listen again okay did I play the exact same chord progression there um Oops, I made a mistake again there. Replicate that and let's listen to what how it sounds in context now. Okay. So I played way off beat there. We're gonna repeat that. Did I play way 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 off beat let's do it in quarter notes quantize and then again extend let's see how it sounds hmm, interesting i i didn't actually notice that i i need to listen to the beat through the clip I'm gonna listen again here. Why does it feel like it's on the beat there? I'm, 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 I need to listen to. It's in four four, right? Yes, it's in four four. So I actually change the chords here on the three instead of the ball. <laughs> But it looks strange in the grid. Oh, wait a minute. Have I changed the grid here? You can't see it, but it looks pretty strange. We're gonna change up and down, see what happens. No, should be fine there. Can't really see why it looks so strange. Let's do even higher, 140. I'm just gonna have this sketch out before I end this video. There we have a chord change I hear. 
Split. So we're going to A there. Uh, we're going to an A. Move that. Let's see. Can I extend it? Oh, wrong track again. Why do I record to on the wrong track? Right, so there we have it. I'm gonna join those. And let's see. Let's see. Why doesn't zoom in like that? Okay. I think that will be. I think that will be an alright start as a sketch, only as a mock-up sketch. Perhaps. I mean, I'm just gonna try one more thing, which is to add some rhythm. So. Oh, it's so hard to hear. I see. Quantizing on is on triplet now, so I'm gonna turn off the auto quantize here on the rhythms part. Then I'm gonna go in again, I think. Can't really understand why the grid grid looks like this. I'm gonna listen to like only the click. Okay, so it sounds alright. Stop panicking note. Um, I'm gonna try this to see how it sounds in six eighths actually. And then I'm gonna draw this back and this too. I think I'm accidentally rolled this in six eighths. <laughs> Oh, I'm crazy. I started in 4-4, four, four, thought that would be fine, but then I ended up in 6 8 Or should I do 3 quarter, perhaps, not to have it too stressy? I think that will be it for this episode of Sue Time with Mike. I have something to start working from, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe now and watch a lot more videos on composing music, producing music, sound design, Logic Pro X, and much more. I'll see you in the next video, my friends.